All right, gotta rearrange the. Gotta re all right, gotta rearrange the log a little bit. Um, trying to think. Last night at around midnight, I thought it was gonna be day two. So, got me one of these. Right, I wanted my first taste of coconut water to be the real thing. Oh, it was good. There was only about four ounces of coconut water in here. Got in my car. I go. I drive to a gym a few towns away that I thought was 24-7. Turns out it wasn't. They changed their hours. So I drove back home. Reheated that six ounces of bone broth and ate it. And then I fell asleep around 2.30 and woke up around 8.30 just now. And so... Refeeding day one had the coconut water. That was supposed to be refeeding day two and then going to the gym. It's all good because I'm starting refeeding day two with some celery. I got, uh, you know, one of the smaller containers of coconut water. Not, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Not the tall one. I got the smaller container of coconut water. So I'll finish this. I'll wait. I'll, you know, I'll shower. I'll do all that. I'll go to the gym. Uh, just going through the motion, walking on the treadmill for five minutes, doing like a front squat set, an overhead press set, uh, a row, a set of rows, and then I'll go do it once more with the same weight, super light. I'm not breaking a sweat. I'm not even going to try and raise my blood pressure. I'll probably get on a bike for five minutes just to, you know, tell my body to get ready for work because the next day I'm going to have a better workout and I'll record what I eat and the stuff that I drink because I woke up with a slight dehydration headache but that's because you know I'm not trying to uh, overdo my stomach my stomach is still fragile so a little bit of dehydration on these on these refeeding days uh, might be you know might be normal okay I just got back from the gym I did uh, you know, a few machine exercises. They were all set to the lowest resistance. Just going through the motion. I was tired. I was weak. Just trying to get my, you know, the motor engrams and my central nervous system. Trying to wake it back up. I didn't break a sweat. My heart rate was was no higher than what it takes to climb up a set of stairs. So I got back from the gym. Started heating up the uh 24 ounces of bone broth and while it was heating up i had my first solid food look at that i didn't go through all of it because i want to be gentle on my stomach but yeah and i learned this is the best way to eat a watermelon although it makes it difficult to eat the white part that has the citrulline in it it's tough to scrape it out but i'll figure that out another time uh yeah, first solid food introduced. I chose watermelon. Uh, I just did a quick search. What are the, you know, some fruits that have low sugar? Watermelon was on that list. Uh, there were other things, like there were some citrus fruits, but I want to stay away from acid. There were some things like strawberries and berries, but I wanted to stay away from those. Not only are they really high, highly, you know, pesticide, uh, herbicide type type plants, but there's a, a, a lot of uh, tough fiber to those whereas if you know the watermelon is very light fiber uh light fiber low sugar high electrolyte high water um today i will not be counting my macros because you know i drank i drank one of these at the gym i'm eating this and if all goes well i'll be introducing some some uh dark green veggies some steamed dark green veggies and some complex carbohydrates all right second meal of the day 24 ounces of bone broth and this time i went with a cantaloupe so i was going through a list of all the fruits that i purchased uh you know what would be good blah 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 the general rule is stay away from acidic fruits and uh Especially something like oranges or grapefruits that have a lot of pulp. It's a lot of tough to digest fiber. 
So I went through the watermelon. It's not very pulpy, but it's solid. So I went through this and I wanted something different. So I went with this cantaloupe and it's got more fiber to it, but there's less of it. And they're both low acidic, high in electrolytes, vitamin C's and sugar and not too much sugar, but sugar. So second meal of the day. This and this. I can't keep track of all the macros. I don't know how much that watermelon, how much this was. But two servings, two two bags of the bone broth will be 60 grams of protein. On top of whatever I eat for dinner. All right. It's dinner time. Now I'm going to introduce, you know, more solid food than those. But... The thing is here, now we're adding complex carbohydrates and the dark green cruciferous vegetables. Those are a little uh, difficult to digest. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, you know, it's just steamed broccoli with some lemon and lime zest on it. Fresh lemon and lime zest. And then it's a mixture of purple sweet potato and white Yukon potato with some coconut cream. A little bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt and then you know how I love my raw milk 16 ounces of uh, raw cow's milk I'm getting about 20 grams of fat here and uh, yeah that's dinner time it's this is uh, you know what time is it it's probably about 9 o'clock p.m. on refeeding day two well Refeeding day number two is coming to a close. It is 11.50 p.m. I'm going to read a thing or two here very quickly uh, from the chapter Properly Exiting a Fast. The process of coming out of starvation is more important than going into it, Dr. Shinnikoff. Refeeding syndrome is when too much food or liquid nutrition of specific types, example protein drinks, banana, and smoothies, is consumed during the initial two to three days. When the wrong foods or too much food is introduced post-fast before replenishing electrolytes, it can cause an abrupt shift from fat metabolism back to carbohydrate metabolism. This can cause insulin secretions to spike, triggering the production of glucose, fat, and protein metabolism in cells which can lead to edema and other issues. This is why electrolyte replenishment is so important to prevent adverse reactions before the reintroduction of food. Okay. Here are the protocols that were written down in this book. Uh, long story short, uh, avoid all acid drinks, no citrus or vinegar. Uh, that's why I chose the fruit that I chose. That's why I haven't been eating apples or berries or kiwi or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Okay, we did the water with the baking soda. I did the magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, sodium with the celery water. Um, here they're talking about, he says, day one through three, use probiotics. I worked in the supplement industry. I, I'm not sure that those over-the-counter probiotics, I'm not sure that they work at all. Uh, you'll have to be your own judge. I don't think they work. Um, you know, he says coconut water, one cup per day. Vegetable, beef, chicken, bone broth, tea and coffee to a minimum. Uh, okay, day four through seven. Slowly introduce normal foods, but be... Cautious to avoid foods with sugar carbohydrates like bread, pastry, cereal, bagels, and remember to continue to eat small amounts, typically the size of your fist, to prevent rapid weight gain. Uh, that's not a concern of mine. I'm just concerned with making sure everything runs smoothly. 
Fruit is not recommended in the first three days since it contains fructose, a form of sugar. Eat small amounts of easy to digest food at any given time. Steamed vegetables, soups, and salads. No tomato or spices. No fermented food. Uh, stay hydrated. Make sure you're drinking enough water. Water is necessary for proper digestion. Talks about eating whole foods. And I think that's everything from the book that I wanted. So, the protocols that were in this book. The protocols that were in this book were written... I don't know how many fasts he had done when he wrote the book. But he has his YouTube channel. And these are updated protocols. And this one was as recent as a year ago. And he's seen here on day one consuming a quart of coconut water after after the uh, the baking soda. After he did the baking soda for an hour, he went on to the coconut water. And he said he drank the quart of coconut water for over a couple of hours. Now let's take a look at this nutrition. In the book it said to avoid fructose. However, that is the source of sugar in coconut water. So it's not that he's contradicting himself. It's that when he wrote the book, it was, you know, he, he did however many fasts he did. And experience taught him that the research was over scrutinizing of the methodology. Whereas in reality, his newer method, not only is it not dangerous or wrong but it's it's better on on when i consumed the coconut water i felt amazing better than the celery but the celery was important for cleaning out the digestive tract of all the juices and all the drinks and all the methods that i've ever used to cleanse i've never gone through anything like the celery water that being said you know if i had to do it again i don't think i would need a gallon and a half of celery water, maybe just a gallon. So let's take a look. This one quart, forgive the glare, one quart of coconut water, one quart of coconut water contains 25.6 grams of sugar. So a gallon of celery water contains, I think, 30, 30 something. Don't quote me on it. And that, that this just goes to show that there's comparable methods and you can do whatever whatever you prefer. Uh, as for the solid foods, I'm glad I did that. You saw how much it was. It was steamed broccoli, boiled potatoes, uh, very few ingredients. I drank my milk. That's the probiotics. I'm increasing my fat intake uh, because tomorrow I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to see what kind of output I could do. I'm not going to be doing any cardio. I'm not going to be doing high intensity interval training. I'm going to be doing slow controlled reps, focusing on the eccentric movement and just testing my strength. It will be day three of refeeding tomorrow morning. So that's the reason behind me consuming complex carbohydrates and the cruciferous vegetables and the fat. Right. Not only that, but I got the 60 grams of protein from the bone broth. And the reason for the bone broth, not only does it taste good, it's hydrating. The protein, it's got some minerals in it, but it's got collagen. And after fasting for 168 hours, the skin was stressed beyond anything that has ever been stressed, you know, in... in so the collagen helped restore it, and I can feel the, the restoration running through my skin. So that's, that's the reasons, the methodologies. I know I went off protocol a little bit, but I did my research, and I followed the lead of the rocket scientist, more or less. I still, you know, if this was a coloring book, I still stayed within the lines, mostly. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the scale. Just a review of the urine, day three. Day three, day four, day five, look at that, day six, day seven, day eight, that's a rehydration day, day nine. Let's take a look and see if there's any slag, I don't think I see any. No, that's, 
that's pretty clear. Maybe a little bit of slag, but look at that, that effect from that. That is amazing. I never knew that was possible. One eighty one point three. So I'm down nine pounds. Body fat fifteen percent. Water sixty one point eight. Twenty three point two. I know I lost more body fat than that. This is an inaccurate reader because it's measuring the condensation on my foot. I know I lost more body fat just by looking in the mirror. But again, that wasn't the goal. The goal was stem cells. And the slag. Yikes. Alright, that concludes refeeding day two.